Self-self cooperation is a mechanism in which you use to deliver programs or projects. Consider it as a vehicle to move from point A to point B. So when it comes to rice production, self-self cooperation actually facilitates the sharing of rice system technology transfer between the southern countries. So it allows, or let's say permeates, countries in the global south sharing their experience with others who are in the south that have not caught up to that yet. So if you talk about rice production, in Korea, China, they are producing tons of rice. rice. But when you look at Africa, especially West Africa, where rice is more or less consumed three times daily, where we have deficits in rice production. These workshops is really important because uh, it's an exchange of knowledge between countries on uh, increasing rice production. And it's not just production on the farm. We're also talking about processing of rice. We're also talking about uh, making sure that you have good quality rice. Uh, so it's both productivity and competitiveness of locally produced rice. And uh, some of the practices that uh, we've seen partners exchanging include uh, improved varieties, so good quality seed of varieties that yield better, resistant to diseases. We now even have submergent tolerant varieties that uh, will be useful in uh, flooded conditions. Um, another area is on good agricultural practices, so including fertilizer application, you know, timing of planting, the spacing and all those crop management practices that come with it. Rice in Sub-Sahara Africa, first it's a very important crop. One of the proofs that it's a very important crop, it is a strategic crop from a lot of governments. Let's talk about Burundi, Rwanda, Tanzania, Mozambique, Kenya, Malawi. In all those countries and others, Rice is a strategic crop, meaning that the government have uh, realized how important rice is and how rice can be a very big contribution to uh, food security. Rice is a very strategic crop. Consumption is increasing, it's on the rise. Like I said earlier on in West Africa, in fact, we consume rice every day, like uh, a colleague who put it in Sierra Leone. When you eat, when you have a meal without rice, it's not food. So virtually it's becoming part of our daily diets, especially in West Africa once again. It is also becoming a cash crop. That's why it is very strategic. Where countries foresee economic gains with, with, with producing rice and exporting it. I think, why not? I think in the next 10 years, there are some countries that can say they are rice self-sufficient. Let me give you an example. Look at Nigeria. Nigeria produces about 7 million metric tons of rice. You have Mali, which is hitting up to almost 2 million. You have that of Ghana and Senegal. So I am sure with the right practices, with the right seeds, with the right varieties, with the right technologies, and when I'm saying technology, I'm talking of the small innovation mechanization equipment that we have in the rice sector. Obviously, African countries, in the next five to 10 years, some countries can be rice self-sufficient, just like what Korea has done. IRI, as an international institute, is quite well advanced in rice development pipelines, in mechanization expertise, in uh, seed systems, in training. And our program has uh, started back to 2006 in Africa, our program. And uh, from there, we are having a lot of technologies that are already advanced in Asia that can be used in Africa. That's how I see uh, IRI coming in, IRI entry point. Specific mandate for Africa rice is to increase rice self-sufficiency in Africa. And we work with national governments 
uh, through what we call uh, task forces. So for different disciplines like uh, breeding, agronomy, post-harvest, policy, gender, we have task forces in each country that work directly with Africa Rice to make sure that we have all the value chain innovations required to boost rice production. And in each country we establish what are called rice sector development hubs. These are the regions of importance for rice production for each of the countries. We focus our efforts there and this is where we test the technologies and we engage with the enterprise domain to ensure that the value chain really operates uh, and increases both production and productivity of rice. This particular program brings in countries from Thailand, Vietnam, the Philippines, where we import a lot of rice from. And we can learn from these countries how they have got into. You see, interestingly, South-South cooperation allows us to avoid the pitfalls that these countries made. So by gathering here in Ghana, it will allow countries to learn from one another how did you improve your seed systems? How did you reduce post-harvest? How have you been able to add value? Are you producing rice oil, rice cake, rice wine? All these experiences that will be shared in this particular meeting will allow countries to go back and say, look, we can learn from country A, country B, when we are talking about seeds distribution system, technology transfer systems. So this particular workshop, at the end of the day, is an opportunity to enhance the rice value chain for Sub-Saharan Africa.